That's Jesus on the cross as a serpent. The serpent is our sins. Yes. But so our desires will change. That's how we know we're born again. Welcome to Voice of the Wind, conversations between a seminary student and his dad. I'm Jonathan Paul Poland, and with me is my dad, Galen Paul. Join us as we relish in God's truth and recall his faithfulness. Episode 2, A Kingdom Prerequisite. Hi, Dad. Hi. <laughs> Let's start over. Start over. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So we're on the topic of being born again. Yes. And uh, so last time we were talking about how Jesus's analogy of the wind mm-hmm. is meant to bring attention to the sovereignty of the Holy Spirit in initiating the new birth. I like to sum it up this way. It's not your choice. It's a sovereign voice. You like what I did mm-hmm. there? homiletical it's not your choice it's a sovereign voice Uh, and so it's not something that we can make happen and so nicodemus is trying to make it happen how do i get back into my mother's womb Mm. when i'm old already old and so he's like give me the give me the 12-step plan Mm. and we talked about the double word play the 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 double meaning in the words for uh, sound and wind which can also mean Mm. voice and spirit. So Jesus is doing an intentional uh, play on words here. Yeah. So we're, we're only born again by the sovereign blowing of the spirit of God, the wind. And mm. uh, when he speaks to us, which is the sound of the wind, it seems to come out of nowhere. You don't know where it came from. And uh, it's powerful. You can't stop it when it blows. It's going to happen because God is powerful. When Jesus says to Nicodemus, uh, if uh, truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That water and Mm -hmm. spirit is going back to Ezekiel 36, the promise of the new heart. Mm -hmm. And I will sprinkle clean water on you, God says, and you shall be Uh clean from all of your idols and all of your iniquity. And I will take... Mm -hmm the heart of stone out of your flesh and I will replace it with a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and obey my judgments Mm. and do them. So this is the promise of the new heart uh, that God is going to give to everyone who is in the new covenant. This Mm. is the new birth that God is promising in Ezekiel 36. And so Jesus is saying here in John chapter three, that time is now Nicodemus that time is now. The fulfillment of that prophecy is here. The kingdom is here. The new covenant is here. And you have to be born again, Nicodemus. Mm. And so then I was thinking after last time that we should put up some guardrails mm-hmm. because uh, when you focus almost exclusively on that aspect of the new birth, the fact that it's something we cannot do for ourselves, we can't do anything to make it happen. We can't manipulate it. It's completely up to God. It's a sovereign act of the Holy Spirit. When we focus on that almost exclusively, it can lead toward fatalism. It can lead toward people hearing that and throwing their hands up in the air, either in despair or in uh, apathy and saying, well, I guess God is going to do it if God is going to do it. And there's nothing I can do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if it happens, it happens. And, uh, and I think that Jesus in this passage actually puts up some things that keeps us from both apathy and despair and fatalism. And so I wanted to talk about that today. And uh, so if the first point is, it's not your choice, it's a sovereign voice. I like to say the second point is, it's not you can dispense with it, it's a kingdom prerequisite. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, so it's, it's it's not it's, optional it's required it's not an option it it's is not optional you yeah. have to be born again to get into yeah. the kingdom you nobody goes to heaven unless this happens to them no right this is to you know make you concerned about your spiritual state and about your eternal destiny because if this hasn't happened to you you are not going to heaven yet And so a lot of people need to ask themselves the question, have I been born again? How do I know I have been born again? And if you are just, if you're not concerned about that, 
then uh, Jesus' words then are if you're, completely missing. If you're not concerned mis- about it, you're not born again. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you're not concerned about it, you might not be born again. That's one thing. And the other thing is, uh, um, well, you're, you're not allowing Jesus' words to have their intended effect on you. Jesus mm-hmm. wants you to be uncomfortable here. Well, some, even if you're born again, you might, he might want you to be uncomfortable here. And because mm. uh, you know, the Bible says, make mm. your calling and election sure. In other words, make sure okay. you're saved. Make sure you're called. Okay. Make sure you're chosen. Make your mm. calling and election sure. You know, if you're not sure, make sure, because you should be uncomfortable with not being sure about whether you're saved. Well, and, so and then I, 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 yeah. I, is it Matthew 7, 24, where Jesus said, many will come on to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord. Have we not done many wonderful works? Is that Matthew exactly. seven twenty four? That's Matthew seven. Uh, yeah, I think it's around there twenty four. So and he, yeah, uh, and I, I think about that as my own my own self. When I read that scripture in Matthew, I'm like, I am I you know, and, and many times I thought, is it okay for me to doubt mm. that I'm saved? So that makes me even dig further to want to make my calling and election sure. Right. Um, and because the people in Matthew seven twenty four are arrogant, right? They assume they're saved. They assume they're saved. They assume they know the Lord. But yeah, Jesus they, said, "I never knew." He didn't say, "I, I knew you once, and I don't yeah. know you anymore." You know, he right. said, "I never knew you." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Ooh, Jesus, we know scary. you, but I don't know you. Jesus says, it's "I like, heard about uh, you. I like yeah. you. I like all the things about Jesus and the gifts and the." And the miracles and stuff. Well, like Nicodemus. Mm-hmm. I like the miracles. Right. Yeah. Nicodemus like is a great teaching. example of that a religious man. really good. Yeah, exactly. Nicodemus is a great example of a religious man, you know, spotless Pharisee leader mm-hmm. who admires Jesus and respects Jesus. But yeah. at this point, he is not saved. At this point, he is not born mm-hmm. again. And uh, so admiration of Jesus, respect of Jesus. Um being religious, being squeaky clean by the world's standards. Like uh, none of these things prove you're saved. And uh, the people in Matthew seven, they, they were convinced they knew who Jesus was, Mm. you know, calling him Lord, Lord. That's a Hebrew superlative. It's like saying, it's like saying, Holy, Holy, you know, you're not just Lord, you're Lord, Lord. Yeah. Like you're, we really think you're our Lord. I mean, they thought they knew him. Wow. And, and, and Jesus says in Luke, why do you call me Lord and not do the things that I say? Uh, so they say, Lord, we know you. And Jesus's retort is, but I don't know you. And I never did. I never knew you. Your name was mm. never written in my book. And so on the Lord's side, mm. there was a definite, no, you're not my people. And, it, and mm. you know, they weren't written in the book and then expunged. They were never written in the book. Okay, so and, I'm in the doctor's office yesterday, and I had yeah. time to wait, and uh, looking out the window, and I'm praying, and so I brought up to the Lord, I said, so how can we know we're born again? Mm-hmm. And the Lord said to me very clearly, your desires will change. Your wants will change. Your appetite will change. Bingo. Yeah. Yep. And what, what will it change to? That well, then we go to the light. Then we go to the uh, we're we're, we're yeah. And just the next verses. Those yep. who love the light will go to the light. Bingo. Those who love the darkness will go to the darkness. People that are in darkness don't don't go to the light because they don't want the light. They yep. like the darkness. Yep. And so the desires that how we know we will we are born again is you will love the light. Mm-hmm. You will hate the things of the darkness. You That's will right. repent of the things of darkness. That's right. But but you won't necessarily you, you won't necessarily if your desires change to like, hey, I like the thought of Jesus. It's really good. But it's not the gifts. Those gifts are nice. It, it's not the 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 music. Uh, you know, we can get on the, the the next thing about the serpent, but. Uh, I like we talked about last time uh, that we didn't record. I thought it'd be a, a great recording that we had last time when we talked how we, we like a Jesus that we can control. Yeah. And the yeah. wind, 
you can't control. He, it's, it's so ironic that he, he brought up the wind to Nicodemus because Nicodemus, I mean, today we, people like a, the thought of Jesus. In fact, he says, how many, I counted seven times in those few little verses, seven times he says the word belief. Yeah. Seven times. And yeah, so and when seven, I, when is I a very, the, seven is a very important number. Yeah, seven is yeah. a very important number. So John, yeah. you know, throughout the gospel of John, John uses numbers in that way. Mm. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's an accident that he put believe in this section seven, seven times. times. Yeah. But yeah, you know, when I, when I witness the people and talk about, Hey, uh, do you believe in Jesus? Oh yeah, I believe. And I always say, well, the devil believes too. Right. He believes in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Not that kind of belief. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask you the question, Hebrew or Greek, what is, what is the word believe in these, these few chapters here in John three? Sure. Good question. Yeah. So, uh, so the, the most important distinction I think to make is that in English, the word believe uh, falls almost exclusively in the range of intellectual belief or like uh, confidence mm. in a fact, like a theory or something like that. You don't normally say, I believe in my wife or I believe mm. in, I believe in my dad. You know, we, we, mm. that kind of language isn't as common as it used to be in English. Mm. And so I think that's one of the reasons why I think trust would be a better word choice. Well, because he doesn't think, say, he doesn't say trust though in there. He says, believe. Well, yeah, but it's the same word in Greek for both ideas. Okay, I agree with you. Trust. Okay, so th there's the analogy of the guy, the tightrope walker, going across, going across the twin towers when the twin towers are there, and he took a wheelbarrow, and he said, "Do you believe I can?" To the crowd, he said, "Do you believe I can take this wheelbarrow across this thin tightrope to the other building?" And everybody goes, "Yeah, I believe. Yeah, we believe you can do it." So he did it. And he says, "Now, do I have a volunteer to get in?" the wheelbarrow and do you still believe i can take yes. you over the tightrope and they go no no mm -mm. they're not willing to stake their life on it nope not yeah. willing to stake their life on which it, so. which proves that they don't have a ton of confidence that he can actually do it right right exactly that's a so good everybody analogy likes, everybody everybody likes jesus yeah he's a good guy <laughs> the so. verb for believe in the bible is the word pistevo and pistevo, and the noun is pistis, faith or belief or trust. And it's, it's a kind of committed trust. So, you, uh, so it's not just believing that something is true, although it can mean that. That's the thing. It's just like it's the same word in James when James says the demons believe that there is one God and they tremble, mm -hmm. right? All right? So that's, that's in that context, he's talking about believing in a fact. You know, believing that there is only one God. That we have to back up to being born again. So, yeah. How do we become born again? Right. So, so, but uh, to just to just believe in Greek is trust in a person in this context. It's not belief in a fact, not belief that something is true. Okay. Primarily, it is a trust in a person, Jesus. In chapter one, it says, uh, he was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. Verse 11, he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the mm. flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So that's the new birth, you see. So there's a connection here. Mm -hmm. So to understand chapter three of John, you kind of have to go back to chapter one of John and you see what he's talking about. So mm -hmm. what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Well, in verse 12, it's paralleled with receiving Jesus. In other words, Jesus says, I want <clears throat> to be your savior. I have come to save you. And when you receive him, you are allowing him to do that for you, and you are putting your trust in a person. It's okay, a I'm going to get, get a living I'm, trust. 
I'm yeah. going to get into the semantics here. Sure. With the receiving, when in the marriage vows, when the priest or the preacher says, "Do you receive this woman?" Is that right? Do I got that right? As your uh, lovely, I'm trying to wife? remember what the vows are. <laughs> well, no, but it, yeah. okay. Everybody says, "Have you accepted Jesus into your heart?" Mm. Right. Okay. When you, when you talk to people about that. Yeah. But it, it never, if I'm, I, I might be mistaken, but I don't think it ever says that we are to accept Jesus. It says we are to receive. Receive. Him. Yeah. And that's kind of down it's, to semantics, but it's well, exactly. Well, yeah. I'll bring it up is because if I said to my wife, honey, you know, I accept you. <laughs> she wouldn't, she wouldn't exactly like that, would she? But I, if yeah. I receive you as my wife, right. I didn't accept you as my wife. I mean, you know, accepting is like, yeah, I, I, well, I it, gives, it gives the impression that you have the right to uh, reject her as well. Yeah. Like I, I accept you as, uh, when I could, I I could you reject as, you. Yeah, I, I could you reject you, but I accept, I accept you. you. I accept yeah. you as long as you do yeah. what I want. Uh, right. Exactly. <laughs> so. That's so the I, Jesus we like to control. So, um, the one that, yeah, I looked up receiving. the marriage. I looked up the traditional marriage vows, right. and it actually uses the verb take, Ooh. which is which is interesting. Uh, but I think it has the same take meaning as woman. receive. So, like I, Jonathan, take you, Aaliyah, to be my lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward. Right, right. Yeah. So, I'm, am I am I getting off track with the with the semantic of accept? Uh, uh well. No, not necessarily, because I think that uh, the word accept can carry uh, associations and connotations that are rather negative that we that yeah. we don't that we don't want to have associated with receiving Jesus. However, um, hmm. however, under certain circumstances, the word accept can mean to receive, and I think that in that sense, it's hmm. okay because it's very biblical. As we've just shown here in John chapter one, we do receive Jesus when we believe in him. And I think that that is part and parcel to the definition of believe. What is biblical saving faith? It's a receiving of Jesus mm -hmm. as our own, as our own savior, as our own Lord. That is very biblical. And it's not it's, as it's a pet. Right. And not as a pet. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> not as a pet. But no. um but obviously, John associates this with the new birth, but look at his verbiage. He says, to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, uh, he gave the right to become children of God. So we become children of God uh, as a result of receiving and believing in Jesus. And then he says, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. It seems pretty clear mm. here that the new birth happens first. Yep. The, the new birth happens first, and hmm. then we believe, receive, and become children of God. So yeah. let, me, let me point out, if I'm not getting off track too much, but we, we are born again because dead people can't do anything spiritually because we're dead in our sins before we are born again so right. dead people can't come to the cross first like they've heard many times you know come to the cross and lay your sins down and receive jesus or accept jesus we have to mm -hmm. be born again before we even repent correct dead people can't do anything Oof, and if you're, people, if you're don't, dead, people don't like this if you're this if you're dead yeah, so this is what the new birth is, and I think this is important to clarify. The new birth is new spiritual life where there was once only death. That's mm. what being born again is. So uh, you, you do get this from the Gospel of John, but it becomes very clear in Ephesians chapter 2, which I mm. would think would, yep. because some, peop, some people are not going to believe this unless they see it for themselves. Right. So if he, Ephesians chapter 2, listen to this, listen to these words. Paul is writing to Christians here in the church in Ephesus, and this is what he says to Christians. He says this, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, 
following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, that would be the devil, mm. among whom we all lived in the passions of our flesh once. So Paul is including himself here. We mm. all of us, every Christian, if you're a Christian today, this was true about you. So this is, listen to what he says, mm. verse three, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Not me. That's pretty bleak. <laughs> not me. I wasn't like that. I was a good guy. Right. And <laughs> not according to Paul. And so it's like Nicodemus Ooh. needs to realize that this is his state. This is true about wow. him. Until we are wow. born again, until we have new life, this is true about us. We are all dead in our trespasses and sins. And then verse four, hmm. the great transition in Ephesians two, verse four, but God, uh, magnificent, the best two words, grace. the best two words in the, in the Bible, but God, God. it's like, you, you, you think that your condition isn't that bad. I'm sorry. It's that bad. And it's worse. Hmm. You are much worse off and much more evil and lost than you ever thought you were but god mm. that's the good news but god going on being rich in mercy it's mm. in other words it's not because of how good we are or what we deserve it's because of mercy but yeah. god being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses marvelous love mm. god loved us even when we were dead in trespasses he loved moral and ethical corpses okay let me who let could me, do let nothing me for him yeah let me say something here he loved us so much people kind of just brush over that i i want to add to that he sought us out he he like the holy ghost hounded us Yes, the hound. Till he found us. Till he found he found me in a basement warehouse. I yes. wasn't. There was no evangelists around. There was no TV about. And there was nobody praying for me at the time. I was all alone. Mm -hmm. But he sought me out. He loved me so much. Hey, the, the 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 prodigal son loved him so much that he sought yeah. him out. Yep. He, Even in the pig's den. He was he realized the light every day. The light came on the prodigal son going, I had it better at my dad's house. Mm -hmm. And he went back. Mm -hmm. But he sought him out, sought me out, sought you out. Mm -hmm. Of course, we, we got to hear the gospel. And we have, like Isaiah said, well, that's we part have of how that's part of how he seeks us out. Yeah. That's part of how he hounds us is through sending the gospel to us. And we're preaching the gospel right now, and people are hearing it. So yeah. Hopefully, God willing, somebody yeah. God is seeking somebody out. God is seeking somebody out right now, you know. So that that's what we hope mm. and pray. Yeah, but by uh, the mercy, by the love of God, God so loved the world that He's seeking us out. People don't realize that. I mean, He's seeking us. Mm -hmm. it, like I hear, I hear it all the time. Are you, are you, are you, are you looking for Jesus? And people will make a joke of it. I didn't know He was lost. All this kind of stuff, but. You know, it's like, wait, has, has yeah. Jesus sought you out? Has he, when I, when, you know, when you always talk about, you know, have you, have you yeah. found Jesus? No, I, I, I want to reverse that. Has Jesus found you? Right. Yeah. Jesus is not lost. We're the lost sheep. Jesus isn't lost. You're lost. Yeah. So We're the lost he sheep. You? He seeks us. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, so they, moving on, this is fantastic. And this is where we see the connection to the new birth right here. So. Because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive. He did. Boom. New birth. He made Wait a us did, 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 alive. I, did, I didn't hear a prayer of salvation before that. Yeah. <laughs> did you? No, it, no he made is, us alive. There's, this is one of, the, one of the most striking things about Ephesians chapter 2 in, in this passage by Paul is... So far in this passage, there has been no mention of human faith. 
no mention of human repentance, mm. no measure of our free will or our choice to accept or reject Christ. So far, all of this is God's action, wow. God's action. And he didn't do it in us primarily at the moment that we believed. He did it when he raised Christ from the dead 2000 years ago. You can see mm. that in verse in verse five. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let's back this up is, again, though. This is all yeah. God's action. This unilaterally this is, God. So it's all grace. Was, it, it's almost like watching a TV show with, with a hospital thing. Code blue, you know, get the paddles. The dead person couldn't do anything. The, mm -hmm. the, the dead, their, their heart stopped. They had to get they had to get the paddles and clear. Boom! You know, the person comes back alive. Yep. You know, it's us. We were dead in our trespasses. How can we dead in our trespasses do anything? We're we're, exactly. we're walking in darkness. We love the darkness. Yeah, that's and how that, do we that... how do we want to come to light to the light unless we come alive. Exactly. Wow. Yep. And then he says, God did this so that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So that was the reason why he saved us so that he could show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his yeah. kindness toward us. So it's for the glory of his grace and his kindness. And then finally in verse eight, he makes reference to our faith but he makes reference to it as an instrument through which he saves us. In other words, it's not the cause of our salvation. It is one of the instruments through which God saved us. Result. The, it's, it's a result. And it's, you know, it's just one of the instruments. So in verse eight, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. So faith is the instrument. It's the means, but the cause is grace. And we have been, so grace has saved us through faith, and that's our faith. But then he, he wants to make absolutely clear that you don't take any credit for that faith. Because the very next sentence, he says, and this is not your own doing, literally, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So, so this even can faith, get, this, even this, faith this, is a gift from God. So this yeah. can get really complicated, though, for people. Because we just said that God is the one that made us alive. We were dead. But can dead people have faith? No, dead people cannot have faith. Dead people cannot so, have faith. So, so not, not, let's not, explain that. Yeah, so, so dead, dead people cannot have faith. And the, the, the conclusion from that is that we are made alive first, and then we have faith. So the causal relationship is not faith, mm. then new birth. No, the causal relationship is new birth and then faith. So we're getting back to immediately. the wind. We're immediately. We're getting back so, to the wind. So faith, faith, is, faith is the evidence that the new birth has happened. Right. Faith is the signs of new life. Faith is the fruit that immediately grows when the tree becomes good. And so- right. Faith appears immediately when the new birth happens. So the new birth is not something that uh, takes place divorced from the preaching of the gospel or divorced from faith in Christ. It's not as though you get born again, and then days later you believe in Jesus, or you get born right. again, and then a year later you hear the gospel and you, and you believe in Jesus. No, the new birth happens through the preaching of the gospel. So God calls us out of death into life through the preaching of the gospel he makes us born again and immediately as a result of that new heart we believe in jesus so immediately we get in the wheelbarrow yep and immediately we, we jump in because we, jump, we know jesus we take know, me across we know he's real and we know he can do it yep exactly so um back well, to let's john make a, let's make it let's make a comparison of someone who thinks they have faith who mm. thinks they're born again right how like 
like the Christians in uh, Matthew seven. Well, there we Lord, go. Lord, Lord, right. Lord, Lord, so, Lord, have we not done this and that? Yeah. How how can we tell people right now that you could be one of those? Right. Well, if you're trusting in your own works and your own goodness and your own accomplishments for Jesus, you might be mm -hmm. one of those people. In Matthew seven, that's what they were doing. Lord, we can't be lost. We did this for you, and we did that yeah. for you. You know, look right. at all the good things we've done for you. If you're trusting in your own works, you might not be saved. Because mm. the people who are saved are the people who trust in Jesus, not themselves. Right. And uh, okay, another, let me let me let me throw a wrench in here. Yeah. Kate, Canaanite woman. Mm. Remember her? Yeah. Yeah, Canaanite the, Canaanite, the Canaanite woman. Yeah. One of my favorite scriptures in all, Matthew 15. Canaanite woman came to Jesus, hounding him and bugging him, bugging him, but to heal her daughter that was possessed with the demon. And the right. disciples said, Did you just get her out of here? She's bugging us. And he turned around and he basically called her a dog. Yeah, he did. He says, Is it meat for me to get the children's bread? I'm yeah. not called, but the house of the, 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 the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's my my mission. And he, she kept hounding him and said, "Is it meat for me to give? Is it good for me to give the children's bad bread me to the dogs? To the dogs?" And she said, "Yes, Lord." But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And he said to her, "There's only two times Jesus said, great is your faith.' This was one of them." He hmm. said, "Woman, great is." your faith right. humility where's humility today where's yeah. the humble people that might 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 think to themselves am i saved right the people who are willing am to I? admit that they're a dog you know am i like, or is yeah. it or is it the ones that sit in front and go i tithe i do yeah. all the right things i'm right I'm, you know man yeah. i preach the gospel i man i right yeah are the ones people sit back people back today the, back Back of the, people back today of the in church, church will get offended. Chest, yeah, that's his it. Chest, face that's it. it. And he goes, who, who came out righteous? The one in the back saying, you know, remember me or the thief on the cross. Remember me? Yep, exactly. You nailed it. Or the one yeah. that's standing up so, self-righteous. That Yeah, the Pharisee, the Pharisee who's standing up front with his eyes to heaven and, you know, at the altar and, and uh, bragging about all the good things he's done. Mm. And, uh, he he leaves to his house not justified, but the sinner, the tax collector, who the Pharisee hates and finds disgusting, and compares himself to, and says, "Oh, I'm much better than this person." Mm -hmm. That person who admits that he's a sinner, who knows that he's a sinner, and beats upon his chest and won't even look up to heaven, but says, "Lord, be propitious to me, the sinner." That's the literal Greek. Lord, be propitious to me, the sinner. That, so, that man, well, that man walks down to his house justified, didn't do anything except admit his guilt, didn't do anything so, except God be merciful. What yeah. is the first, what probably, what is the first thing that we realize when we're born again? Yes. I mean, when I receive yeah. a gift that I've wanted for, like when I got my grand piano that my wife bought me mm -hmm. uh, as a gift of, of oh, that's a good analogy. I was almost dead in the hospital. Doctor mm. said I should have died, and miraculously I, I I came through it. Thank God! And when I got home, a few months later, my wife bought me a grand piano, and wow, was I grateful! Not only to be alive, but when she gave me that gift, I was so grateful. It wasn't mm. like I stood up and go, you know what? I've wanted a grand piano all my life. It's about time. Yeah. Yeah, gratitude for our salvation, you know, mm. that's that's huge. I mean, mm. how many people in church are grateful that they're saved and not complaining about? Uh, well, I don't like I don't like the music you did this week. Yeah. The music. Let's the music move. Let's, let's move on from this Jesus um, stuff and let's get to the Book of yeah. Revelation. I don't really. I, like I don't. That. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I like your feel good messages, Pastor. I, I don't like yeah. it when you're. You know, today's today's message was kind of condemning kind of you know i didn't really you know <laughs> yeah i don't that's so that's why people don't like to hear the, the the message of born again they don't like that well yeah i mean if you stand up in church and tell people this um 
that unless you're born again, you're dead in your trespasses and your sins, and you're by nature a child of wrath. A lot of people are going to react uh, with offense. And the proper Ooh. reaction would be the Canaanite woman who, when Jesus called her a dog, said, yes, Lord. You know, and that has to happen by the Holy Spirit. I mean, if yeah, revival... I would stand up in church, I stand up in church and call everybody a dog. <laughs> yeah. If you stood up in church and said, by the way, every single one of you in this place who has not Cancel. been born again is a dog and is a child of wrath and is a walking corpse. I mean, you're, you're... people are going, people are going to be offended. It takes the Holy Spirit and revival for people wow. to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And then oh. beg for crumbs. And that's Jesus. I am not worthy of the bread. Just give me the crumbs, Lord. That's Jesus on the cross as a serpent. The serpent is our sins. Yes. Yes. Full is circle back sins. to John 3. Full circle back sins. to John 3. And a lot of a lot of people don't yeah. understand. Well, I think it's not that. very I think it's yeah, I think like bingo. I think you nailed it. I think it's not very well understood. Because it sounds Let's like talk Jesus, about that. It sounds like Jesus is saying that he's a snake. Right. You know, the serpent. What's on that the, all about? Yeah. The, the serpent was lifted up. So must the son of man be lifted up. Is the son of man a serpent? Like, why mm. is he being depicted as a serpent, which is universally negative symbolism and metaphor mm -hmm. throughout the Bible? Uh, Jesus isn't a serpent, is he? You're not going to understand the cross unless you realize that when you look at it, you're looking at your sins. Yes. You're not going to receive Jesus as your savior or even understand what the gospel is unless you see your sins on the cross and realize that Jesus yeah. died for your sins. Until you see that, the cross will not make sense. And that's why Jesus compares himself to the serpent. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. On our behalf, that's on the cross. Are we going to so wait to the next? Are we going to wait to the next series to talk about the serpent in uh, the book of Numbers? Probably should. Probably okay. should wait until the next one because this one's already getting kind of long. But there yeah. is definitely, I mean, Jesus brings up the connection for a reason. Mm -hmm. He brings up the connection. There's a lot of connections in the yeah, Old Testament. You see it in Isaiah chapter 52 where you, it begins to talk about the servant of the Lord being high and lifted up. Jesus is getting that language from there. Mm -hmm. So the son of man must be lifted up and that's exalted language. Like the son of man will be exalted and lifted up as if he will be highly praised or put on a throne. But Jesus is talking about a cross and he, right. and so the cross is at once the humiliation of Jesus mm. and the exaltation of Jesus. It is at once his shame and his greatest glory, where he is crowned with a crown of thorns and ultimately crowned with a glorious crown, the King of Kings and Lord of yeah. Lords. And it all so, happens so, on the cross. So in leaving here, the the moral of what we're talking about or the essence of what we're talking about is how do we know we're born again? Yes. But so our desires will change that's how we know we're born again but not desires right. for the gifts and the wowie zowie stuff it's the desire of just loving jesus like what john piper says when we get to heaven would we like it heaven if jesus wasn't there yeah. would we like heaven if yeah. god wasn't there yeah what do we love heaven for if it's not desires for the presence of jesus there it's yeah. falling in love with jesus Exactly. So, to sum up, how do we know we're born again? Well, John in this chapter makes the connection very clear. Uh, and also in chapter one, where we read before between the new birth and believing in Jesus, the son of God. So how do you know if you're born again? Well, evidence, exhibit A, do you believe in Jesus and not just 
believing true things about Jesus, like facts, but have you trusted him to save you? Are you, tr- what, and are, are you trusting in your own goodness, your own works, your own religion? Right. Are you right. trusting in the church? Are you trusting in uh, good accomplishments that you've done for Jesus, like the, yeah. like the people who are lost in Matthew 7? Or are you trusting in Jesus? Let then? me ask, can I ask you a question, Jonathan? Sure, yeah. How, how did you know you were born again? Um, it's all the same things that I'm saying right now. I had to ask myself all these questions. Assurance of personal salvation is something that takes time. It's a process. It's something that needs to be made sure, like Peter says. So your it's a, your, it's a your, process. your your experience with becoming born again was different than mine. Right. My yeah, experience well, says boom. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that after the boom, you never, ever doubted your salvation again, right? No, 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 not at all. So, I mean, like, yes, you can you can have assurance of salvation in the moment, but that doesn't mean you'll never doubt it again. It doesn't mean mm. that you'll never <clears throat> sin in such a way, again, that will rock your assurance to the core and make you wonder, mm. am I even a Christian? You, you, you certainly can do that, and you may do that. I um, do that a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. And... By the way, assurance is not the goal. If it was the goal, then the people in Matthew 7 who Jesus says, depart from me to, uh, they had it, man, because they were totally assured that they were saved. You can be saved and not assured of your salvation. If you are believing in Jesus, then you're saved. And you're saved whether you're assured of that salvation or not. Now, that doesn't mean that God wants you to walk around all day long wondering and doubting about your salvation. He wants you to be assured. That's why he tells you, make it sure. Make your calling and election sure. And that's a process. We can turn to Peter right now and look at what that process entails. Add, uh, Add to your faith goodness. Add to your goodness virtue. Add to your virtue knowledge. You know, all of these things will help you to not be ashamed at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in other words, when you ask somebody, when's the last time you prayed? And they have no idea. Right. Yeah. Not, not, a, good sign. Make, not a good sign, right? You not can't go, sign. you can't go too long without talking to your wife uh, and feel like everything is okay. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to, you're going to feel like, all right. You never talk to me anymore. <laughs> right. It's, it's going to feel awkward. <laughs> You know, like ships passing in the night, we're not even married anymore. Something is wrong. Yeah. And, and it's the same way with prayer. If you're born again, prayer should be the most natural thing in the world to you because the mm. Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So if you haven't been so praying, if you, you have no I, prayer I, I life. Get, I'm, making, I'm making a connection now with what you said, because I'm sure people got confused with it. Uh, the, making it a, a, a f- assurance is not the goal. Our goal is to have a relationship. I mean, if I'm, if I'm trying to, if I'm, I'm married to my wife and I'm in love with my wife, but I'm not trying to make, I'm not trying to make that relationship sure that that's torment, right? That's torment. That's torment. Like, yeah, you know, honey, I, I, I know you say you love me, but I'm, I'm not sure I really believe it. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. torment. It is. Yeah. And if you're born again, Jesus becomes your best friend. And you love talking to him. Absolutely. So that's one really good sign that you're born again is you just love talking to Jesus, um, you know, but, uh, but back <clears throat> to the, uh, back to the loving the light passage in John three, we really need to mm. get to this because yeah. like what one sign. So I, I mentioned that one proof that you've been born again is that you have believed trusted in Jesus because John makes that connection over and over again in this chapter. But another connection that he makes is, do you love the light or do you love darkness? So, so John says in verse 19, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people loved the darkness. darkness. That's, that's our natural state. Ephesians chapter two. Yeah. They loved darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. People love their sins. They love their evil deeds. And they don't want to confess that they're evil. They don't want to bring them into the light 
for, for God and other people to see. If that's true of you, you might not be born again. Are you hiding in the darkness? Do you love the darkness? Do you love your sins? Then you mm. might not be born again. And moving on, mm. verse 20, for everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. Moving on, verse 21, mm. but whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. I think that the obvious implication here is that they come to the light because they love the light. They no longer love the darkness. They love it now. They love it. It's attractive to them. It includes exposing your evil deeds because that's what the light does. It includes confessing that your deeds have been evil and bringing them into the light. It's for everyone in God to see. If, if that has happened to you, if you want to confess your sins and bring them into the light, and if you love the light and you love Jesus mm -hmm. and you want to trust him to save you, that's a sign of the new birth. That's how we know we've been mm -hmm. born again. And if that has not happened to you, then you are in danger. You are in danger. Ephesians mm -hmm. 2 says you're a child of wrath. And the wrath of God abides on you in John chapter 3. And you are already in judgment. So you are in danger. And, you, and if you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God and you will never enter the kingdom of God unless this happens to you. So mm -hmm. if anyone is listening to this podcast and, and this is not true of them and this doesn't describe you, mm -hmm. then maybe God is speaking to you right now. And maybe mm -hmm. God wants you to get desperate for this, to realize mm -hmm. like Nicodemus, I'm a religious person. I admire Jesus, but I don't think I'm born again and I don't think I'm saved. And if, and if, and if God is awakening you to that, I, that's the first step to seeking God and hearing God's voice, the sovereign I, I, voice of his spirit speak. To I you would then. add to that. I would add yeah. to that. If your heart's beating right now, really fast. Yeah you're probably born again and or about you need to be. or about to be. And you need to talk to somebody that you trust that maybe a family member that has been hounding you about Jesus, maybe all your life. Um, yeah. Talk to them, talk to them, uh, maybe open the Bible and read it for yourself and ask questions because that's another sign that you're born again. You're going to start asking questions. Yeah. So, a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. So God bless you. Yeah. God bless. And I think that next time we need to talk about, um, so we believe in Jesus, but like, who is Jesus and what are we believing him to do for us? And what is this, what is this whole thing about the serpent that Moses raised up in the wilderness? That'll be the next one. Yeah. And that'll be, that'll get into some really interesting stuff. Oh, it's, it's really? very, very interesting. And I think that it's necessary because this is, uh, this is what we believe when we were born again. And, and uh, we need we... to talk about money because we need lots of money. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Send your checks to this address. <laughs> nope. Nope. No, no money. Nope. We don't even have a page. We, we don't even have a Patreon set up for people to give to us. That's not even really, happen. We really are doing this backwards, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> right, Dad. Uh, all right, buddy. Let's call this one and uh, we'll pick it up again. And one of these days, I'm going to get a better microphone and computer, and the Lord will provide. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. All right. I love you, buddy. Love you, Dad. Bye. God bless you. Bye, bye. You too. Thanks for joining us on Voice of the Wind. Leave a like or a comment, or subscribe if you're on YouTube, or write us a review if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, and share this with your friends. Hope you can join us next time. Precious.